Hello and welcome once again to WWCM, Worldwide Christian Ministries Online Worship Services. It's a great joy to have you with us today and we truly hope that the time spent will be inspirational and serve to help you in your journey with Jesus. We've got a great testimony by a godly couple, Mark and Claire Seddon, who will be sharing about how they came to know Jesus as their personal saviour. And in addition, I'm delighted to gla and glad to welcome our preacher, a young man by the name of Noah Holmes, who comes from my home church in Tunbridge Wells. And he is currently residing in Jerusalem, where he is serving the Lord. However, what I want to say is this, that it is a very good message and it should challenge our hearts and perhaps our status quo. You know, it's very easy when it comes to worship to simply go through the motions and to get involved in the normal sandwich of songs and to do so engaging with the rhythms that heighten our emotions, but not engage with truly what the Holy Spirit is doing. The songs brought to us today may not be that familiar to you, but we would ask that you would prayerfully engage with them and see what God may want to convey to your heart. You know, we live so much in the shallow waters of that which God wants us to experience and is ours in Jesus Christ. He has washed our sin away and made us new creations so that we can experience and enjoy the invisible and the divine in our lives. But we need to accept the fact that all is ours, measured in the level of our surrender. There is a great metaphoric idea of a waterfall of his grace. We can step back and enjoy the view, or we can jump right in and get drenched. For me, I can say, it's all or nothing. I can say, light yourself on fire with passion. As John Wesley once said, and people will come from miles around to see you burn. And this is my desire. You know, I've been touched by his fire. So what I say is let the world come and watch me burn. I've got to shout it from the rooftops until everyone has heard. And I invite you to join me in the conflagration today. Jesus has made an atonement to God for our offenses and now is providing a divine exchange. He gave his all so that you and I could have life. Again, we enjoy it according to the measure of our surrender. The truth is that we have been on a journey of faith, all of us, and perhaps things that once thrilled us have become familiar. We easily get distracted by our jobs and careers, families, etc. And these are all absolutely legitimate things. But the Holy Spirit urges us to concentrate more so on our Father in heaven and Jesus, who is our Savior. What does the scripture say? It says, what shall it profit us? if we gain the whole world and lose our soul. It's all too easy to lose our first love and to simply love Jesus, but not be in love with Jesus. And if we want everything about our lives to be blessed and further enhanced, then we need to surrender afresh and fall in love with Jesus all over again. The ending song today is called The Voice of God. It's the longest one, but I truly believe that God is speaking afresh to his church. We may be locked down, but his voice is not locked out. And his voice will put flesh on our bones. His voice will bring life where there is death. And his voice will give strength in every area of our weaknesses. So God bless you today as you continue with us. And please feel free to engage in the worship. God bless you.
Hi, my name's Mark. And my name's Claire. Uh, and uh, we've been married for about 11 years now. We want to just give you a bit of testimony uh, from, from both of us, from each of us, uh, and then launch into a testimony as well about how we believe God has uh, directed our paths uh, when we've, uh, after we've become a Christian. So uh, my journey as such was uh, that I wasn't born into a religious family, really. Um, I, I sense there was a God along the way really but we didn't attend church or anything when I was young um, and um, a few years into my uh, youth as it were I started getting interested in radio and broadcasting and uh, I had a little play radio station when I was young in my bedroom with like turntables remember them <laughs> and um, records <laughs> and uh, CDs and stuff and I used to have little uh, radio station playing in my bedroom and um, when I was about 14 years old, I joined Hospital Radio and uh, did that for a few years. And then I uh, went to college um, and learned some um, business administration things and uh, word processing and uh, all, all that kind of stuff. And there was a teacher there that uh, was called Sally and uh, she was uh, teaching me how to type, which was a great, great skill to learn back in those days. And um, she said, oh, we've got a, a radio station that's uh, starting up uh, and it's called Radio Cracker and it's run by uh, a, 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 a company called the Oasis Trust and what they're going to do is uh, that they're going to start up all these radio stations across the UK. Do you want to get involved? I said, yeah, that sounds absolutely great. Um, so she said, okay, well, I'll tell you more about it like, later on. Um, and I was just about to go on holiday, so off I toddled away uh, on, on holiday and uh, when I came back unfortunately she she left the company and I didn't think anything of it um, and I just you know pursued my studies um, but I was at hospital radio one day and uh, I received a letter uh, in the in the autumn and she said uh, and it was from the Sally the Sally lady and she uh, said oh you know I told you about this radio station um, well here it is and here's the number to uh, here's the person that you need to contact to uh, get involved so and that's what I did and um, it was basically a radio station that was run by a load of Christians and um, I got involved and after that I started asking questions thinking hang on a minute there must be more to this life and uh, I, I really need to start looking at stuff and uh, there was a shopping center that opened up near me at the time and um, I went round and I was going round um, uh, one of the shops, one of the stores, and I was superstitiously touching Bibles because I thought this was like what I needed to do. And I, and, and that sounds like a really random thing to do, but I, even then, I think that God had His hand on my life at that point. So I phoned up the, the guy who headed up the radio station that I'd been involved with, and I said, "Guy, guy, I, uh, uh, David, who was his name? I really need to actually like." come to church can can I go to, to a church and he said well yeah well my church is down here come come down um, so I did and then and, uh, it was soon after that I gave gave my life to the Lord and gave and became a Christian and uh, I got baptized the uh, the following year that was back in 1993 so yeah that's that's my testimony of how I, how I became a Christian so yeah so I'm Claire Mark's wife and um, it's a short testimony about how I came to know Jesus and became a Christian so um, a good few years ago in my early 20s I wasn't very well and um, I had to just get away and clear my head and I ended up in Glasgow in St George's Square and I remember standing there and, and you know I was very unwell and I looked up at the sky and I saw this beautiful rainbow and it was massive it just the most beautiful rainbow and I just naturally thought to myself so they must have made that rainbow and it just clicked like a click I was just like okay so they must have made that rainbow there must be some there must be a god there must be something that made that um, so that started my journey uh, to find out a bit more about Jesus and how I could follow him and how I wanted to get to know him more so in Easter 2005 I got baptized and yeah I just I just love Jesus and I encourage you just to seek him out, find it out for yourself. And yeah, that's our testimonies. I remember when I was young and your voice shouting loud my name. And since that moment, 
I haven't heard it quite that way. Well, now that I'm older, could you say it again? I remember I was afraid. And oh, the hand I felt lead the way. And for the first time in my life, I felt safe. Well, God, now that I'm older, would you lead me again?
sing it out. Won't oh, take me back. Hear the Lord say, if you ask, he will do it. I hear the Lord say, if you ask, he will do it. He's not wanting to hide or wanting any distance. If there ever was distance, it's because we ran and hide. So I hear tonight, there's a fresh start. And it's only the beginning. I hear tonight there's a fresh star. Just lift your hands and receive it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a fresh star. And it's right here, right now. Fresh star, and it's right here, right now. A fresh star, I prophesy, it's right here, right now. You don't have to beg, you don't have to beg for it. He wants to give it to you anyway. So I declare, there's a fresh star, and it's right here, right now. There's a fresh star. And it's right here, right now. Oh my, there's a fresh star. And it's right here, right now. Yeah. When the storms, when the storms are on the ocean, and the violent wind gets to blow, and no, oh, take me back. Back all the way back, or oh, take me back to my first love.
Ada. Welcome to this Worldwide Christian Ministries service. Uh, my name is Noah. I've been a friend of Worldwide Christian Ministries for quite some time now. Uh, and I'd like to share a message with you today on eternity, um, on God's grace, on living by faith and not by sight, uh, and also God's incredible justice uh, and forgiveness. So I'm going to do a quick reading, a uh, prayer, and then uh, let's then we can get on with the message. So uh, the, the reading is from 1 John chapter 1, verses 6 to 10. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Yes, Lord, I mean, uh, we, we come to you today as, uh, as people who, who have walked in darkness and, and people who do still walk in darkness. And uh, just want to pray that this message is, uh, is protected from anything that, that's not true. Uh, and also we'll be able to, to be transformed uh, by your power. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, yeah, I'd like to give a short message today on eternity. Uh, I'm going to start with a quick uh, testimony on how I sort of began to first get to grips with what eternity is. Um, I don't, I, I still can't wrap my head around it fully, but maybe uh, you can relate to this story. So I had it all figured out. Uh, I loved my life plan. Uh, I wanted three degrees bachelor's and master's and a doctorate. I wanted lots of letters after my name, lots of letters before my name. Uh, but I still wanted a decent portion of humility as well. Uh, I wanted a wife, beautiful wife, but not so beautiful that you know other men would try and would take her from me. Um, I also wanted a house in a nice area of London, uh, but not, not a busy area of London, um, so that you know, we're disturbed by all the traffic when we're sleeping and that sort of thing. I just wanted a job um, at a school, a nice private school. Uh, but I guess I'd also maybe do some uh, teaching in the Christian Union there, possibly. Uh, I wanted to spend my life there, 40 years or so. Um, in at maybe 25 and then, uh, yeah, do, do 40 years of work, retire at 65. Get some respect there, uh, get some experience. Uh, retire, pass on my knowledge to, to, to my family and to friends, and then die easy in my sleep, uh, knowing that my extensive savings would be going to my upper middle class family, uh, of whom I would see the third or so generation. Wow, I mean, that's a life plan. I made that at 16 or so, um, and, I, and I planned how I wanted to die at the age of, the ripe old age of 100. Um, and my, my thing, I had a deal with God and my deal was this, if I got these, then I would worship God for what he'd done in my life. Because anything else, because God is good, he will do good things in my life and anything else will be bad. Uh, the problem was, if you notice, there'd always be the next stage. I would never be satisfied in God. I would get to having a car and I would say, well, I can't worship God yet because he hasn't given me that house. And maybe I'd get that house and I'd say, well, I, I can't worship God yet because he hasn't given me that promotion. Uh, my self-righteousness uh, would have hardened my heart for a century. And maybe, listener, today, um, your self-righteousness is hardening your own heart and you're refusing to worship God on the, on the fact that you don't have a wife yet or you don't have a car or a job. Um... It would have been, for me, a, sem a century of self-infatuation, uh, a century of lukewarm, tepid, dull, works-based, Christ-ignoring, self-exalting life. Um, I thought that if you did, you, you, that you could somewhat pay for your sins by the good things that you do. Uh, I, I was aware, um, at the age of 16, of Christ's complete work on the cross, 
uh, but it, it hadn't hit me. I still thought that that there was some sort of sinlessness you had to you had to do to 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 reach God. So uh, I'll tell you why um, why your good works cannot pay uh, for your sinfulness. Um, so firstly, we're all, we're all sinful. Uh, the Book of Romans completely justifies um, that by saying uh, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And if you need more evidence, we go back to the Bible reading. Uh, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Uh, it would not be unjust for God to look at this string, which is eternity. It would not be unjust for God to look at this blue part of our of our lives here. This is these are our this is our lives. I don't know where you are. Maybe you're here or here. The point is, it's a short time. It would not be unjust for God to say, "Okay, it's over now." Tonight, um, the Book of Romans says the wages of our sin is death, uh, and as sinful people, um, sin is wages. So, um, so our so so our death is uh, is completely justified, and uh, what happens after our death is also justified uh, by our sin. Um, also, um, if you count on your good deeds to outweigh your sin, as I thought that um, that could somewhat be achieved, uh, I'm afraid to say that not even a lifetime of good deeds could outweigh the smallest white lie you have told. Uh, a lifetime of outward charity could not uh, outweigh also a lifetime of a, of a sordid and, and dirty inner thought life. Uh, and generosity can pay for a lot of things, uh, but it cannot pay for righteousness. Um, and the second reason God would be, would be reasonable to say, okay, your blue time on earth, done now. Um, tonight is, is the simple fact that, that he, uh, in the book of Hebrews and also Ecclesiastes, uh, it says that, that there's, a point, there's an appointed time for us to die. So, nice and simple. Uh, the, the people who die today uh, will have made plans for tomorrow. Um, so, at a time when I felt burdened by my sin, um, I I'd, I'd sort of began to feel a heaviness in my heart about, about some of the things I'd done. Um, I was I was quite happy in my sin. I was I was happy in my lust, in my secret life. I was I was just happy with myself. I was oh, I didn't I didn't hate my sin. Um, and at a time when I did begin to feel a bit burdened, I I was tempted to brush it under the carpet, just smile, get through it, just work hard and and brush it under. Uh, and it'll all be okay. But actually, uh, God began to start a work in me, and um, the crux of His work was was the question: What are you doing? You you, you claim to be a Christian. You you do all the right things, and you you're saying all the right prayers, um, but you don't realise that how much your sin that you're living in right now. You don't realise how much it hurts me. And and I'm your I'm your father. I'm your heavenly father. Why have you planned out your life until your death? Um, and he asked me this. He asked me the question: Who's your master? Whom do you depend on? Uh, why do you give yourself the authority to plan out and appoint your life's milestones? Um, and finally, the, the question I'm going to ask this to you as well. Do you realise that your eternity depends on who your master is? Your whole length of this string, which, you, which, which we cannot, you could fill warehouses with this string and you would not even get to the first step of eternity. Do you not realise that all of that depends on who your master is in this short blue string so my plea to you is that if you haven't before there's a way to get this all of this string to count and to to get into heaven and um there's a way to change who our master is on this earth 
So Jesus says you cannot serve both God and money. You cannot serve two masters. Uh, you cannot serve both God and your addiction. That's what I say to you. Uh, you cannot serve both God and your wife in exactly the same way. Um, if you make these things above God, you put them as idols and you're breaking the uh, Ten Commandments. I just want to plead to you to, to confess your sins to Jesus if you, if you haven't before. Um, as the passage we've just read uh, says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is just to do it. There are legal implications. He can clear us of our debt on the day of judgment where everything is called to account. Uh, if you feel as if you are right with the Lord at one time, uh, but you've left him, uh, that, that's what I felt like. He hasn't left you. Um, if you also feel uh, that you've never even considered that, that Jesus is the one uh, who commands uh, what happens for this eternity, and that actually you've, just, you've been so focused on, on this blue part, you haven't even realized that there's something after, um, I, I, I want to give you some good news. Um, our, our unrighteousness and our sinfulness, the two things that God desires uh, for us to, to be with him for eternity in this, in this white string, our unrighteousness and sinfulness um, can, be, can be legally dismissed by God on the day of, on the day of judgment if we accept the fact um, that Jesus was nailed to a cross in your place uh, to carry your sin and, uh, and, and, and let that simple truth uh, change your life. Uh, and it's, it's not our changed lives uh, that pay for our salvation. Um, my, my mind was completely changed when that, when that hit me and my, the desires of my heart were also changed when that, when that reached me for the first time. Um, that changed heart and the, and the things that I do now um, they do not pay for my righteousness. They do not pay for my sinlessness before God. Jesus on the cross, who lived a perfectly sinless life and a perfectly righteous life, death could not hold him. Because he did not sin, then death could not hold him. He had no wages to pay. He rose on the third day, um, and, and, it, and it means that we can... Uh, we can stand before God if we trust in him, uh, completely righteous and completely sinless, as if we never, ever sinned. So, um, my plea to you is to, to get on your knees, um, to come before the Lord, to invite his presence into your life. Um, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Um, and accept Jesus as, as your Lord and Saviour. Uh, sorry, I've got a fly on my face. I'm in Israel. Um, accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. Uh, the blue part of this string which you are on is nothing. Well, it's not, it's not nothing, but it's... Look at what eternity stretches into this ball. You could, you, you could fill a, a thousand warehouses with these balls of string and 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 not even be at the first glimpse of eternity like and, and and we focus so much on this tiny blue line that we have in a few short years of being uh, trapped in in our sinful unrighteous bodies if we accept Jesus uh, we can spend the rest of this string in perfect bodies uh, and in perfect unity with God so my final question to you is is who who is your master um and in fact sorry one more question is it your own eyes living by sight uh, and your own hands on the steering wheel of your life um if so i i encourage you to give over the steering wheel to god and and to trust him uh, he's perfect, he's never made a mistake, he's never told a lie, he's never late, he's never early. Um, live by faith and, and not by sight, that is my plea to you. Um, if, this, if you feel the conviction of this message and, and you're still not quite sure what to do, I encourage you to get in contact 
uh, with Worldwide Christian Ministries. Um, they'll have literature for you, they'll have prayers for you, and, uh, and I'm sure that they can help you um, into discovering Jesus for the first time. Uh, if you already know Jesus uh, and you've listened to this message, um, then this is just an encouragement to keep fighting the good fight and to, and to press on and to encourage others who don't know Jesus in the simple facts um, that, that he died to save them as well, if they accept uh, the gift. So, uh, yeah, thank you for listening to the message and uh, back to Albert with the service. I can hear it in the crackle of a bonfire And I can hear it in the middle of the ocean water Oh, I just can't explain But it makes me wanna cry And I can hear it when the rain falls on my window seal On a playground where children's laughter lives Oh, I can't explain But it makes me want to cry And I can hear it in the busy New York City streets And I can hear it in the country Georgia fields of green Oh, I can't explain No But it makes me want to cry Sounds like grandmama Telling you where you come from Said it's kind of like laughter Out of the mouths of your loved ones Or catching up with an old friend Reminiscing on back when It's like a summertime sprinkler Street cider with my ice cream cone Said it sounds like a choir Singing hymns, hallelujah It's the voice of God can make a grown man cry And I can hear it on the wind of an early morning <laughs> When the fog is getting thick and the birds are chirping Oh, it's just something I can't explain No, but it makes me want to cry And I can hear it in the hush of a midnight hour when I'm alone in my room, if I'm going under Oh, I just can't explain, no But it brings me back to life It's like the sound of a newborn baby crying Yeah, like the final breath of a loved one passing Oh, it's a beautiful thing, yeah Cause it leads me to the light like a drive through movie Small town with the big screen Like grilling out in the front yard Sometimes it's the simple things Like storytelling with my grandpa He was so easy to believe Like when the sun it goes up, yeah Sometimes it's better when the sun comes down Cause there's just something about the moonlight And it can make you feel alright, oh can make a grown man cry Yet again, yet again It's the voice of God It can make a grown man cry
Everything responds when he speaks. I come alive when he calls. I come alive when he speaks. Oh, oh. 